Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. C-R-C, voice of the people. Everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Hi, I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Hi. See, you even threw him out of order, Tom. You started him so much that he went out of order. <laughs> ah, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> Cancel the stream. I'm Mike Delicio. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> okay. I'm Chrissy, aka the voice of the people, voice of you. I used up 50% of my energy in one shot. That's right. Well, we are in the top 50, Hi. so that's, that is. Uh, if that had snapped when I shouted, that would have made more sense. I didn't mean to break so it. So let me ask you this now. <clears throat> None of this makes sense, Tom. Let's is this be clear. pen now out of the rotation? No. You're... How often do you actually clip your let pen? Let me explain to... something to you. That pen? Uh huh. Oh, that's out of my that's rotation. A really hazard. That is a safety. That's OSHA You're violation. You're trying to write. Tom, look at that. Fix this. <laughs> you did that. You did scrape yourself. I did. That's what I'm Why saying. Why would you do that on purpose, Tom? Well, look. I mean, you're doing things. This this pen? Uh, let me. Let me uh, out of my rotation. You need uh, a band aid. Did you break skin? No, I just No, he gave himself a good scrape. See, Why? The fact to, that you can do to that. To prove a point? Yeah, yeah, I figured he would fake it. <laughs> Look, pen rotations are no joke. Okay, anyway, the pen is fine. <laughs> I don't know about Mike, but we are doing our top 100 games of all time. We are. I just buy a pack of 100 pens. And they're cheap Those ones. are garbage pens. I know sir. it, but then when I lose one, I don't whine. Those, you can put those right in the trash. When's the last time you snapped the little. Uh, uh, pocket holder off of one of your crappy pens, though. All the time. Oh, well, never mind then. Also, okay. I actually wear them in my pockets because that's what cool people do. Okay. <laughs> all right, folks, welcome to the top, top 50 games. Fantasy games, apparently. <laughs> the top 50 games of all time. Mm. Um, I don't really got a lot to say except we're in the top half, so it's interesting. That's although right. sometimes there's less movement here. That's true. Yeah, um, this is probably yeah a more. What have I got? What have I got stable here? Stable part of the list. We're doing what, more. fifty through forty-one? Yeah. I've got three on here that have never shown up before. Two of them, it's because they're brand new games. I have one brand new game to my list in this group of ten, and I have a couple that have moved pretty significantly, actually. Well, I am here to judge everyone's picks oh, today. Boy. To the people who I approve of all their picks. No, uh, I kind of wanted to reprint want mine in the last so I can look cool like you and make it look like I have 12,000 years of data. But I, I kept <laughs> I'm actually it. not. This is, I think, the last year I can pull this off. The, the, the font is like. Size it's going to be one three. of those things oh, where true. he's going to do this and the, the paper's all going to just spill out the bottom. <laughs> Let's have a scroll. Well, there we go. Next year he's going to have a scroll. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You guys Aristotle's look at this. Top you already had your like seventh year of this or Probably. something. Mm -hmm. I'm old. All right, well, let's get started. Here we go, number fifty. <laughs> Monday. It's a Monday. For it sure. is a Monday, right? It is a Monday. This a Monday is a Monday. Stream. People are hurting themselves on the slide <clears throat> streams. My Shouting. number fifty. The top fifty. Now we're in the, the the top half of the list. Is this twice as good as your number one hundred? All right, now I'm going to have to... You're making right, me think guys, in mathematics. Let me stream. Let me okay. explain you exponential growth. That would mean growth. that the number one is twice as good as his number two. Mm. It's a hundred times as good as my number two. Yeah, that's insanity. <laughs> no, that is not ma mathematically uh, reachable. No, it's Fine. Not. I'm, not, I'm going to say no, but it, it, it is... In a fact, I think you should say your 50 is worse than your 100. It is. Uh, it's a darn fine game, but it's not actually up five points. So only up five. It was 55 last year. This is a... Cooperative game. There it is. Called and it's based off of a young adult <laughs> so novel close. series. <laughs> so close. The young adult novel series. This is the Reckoners. Number fifty is the Reckoners, and um, this is a game that uh, I played again recently in anticipation of the new expansion that's going to be coming out uh, very soon. Actually, we have an early copy here that I messed with a little bit. So it is a uh, kind of a standard cooperative game in that you are, you know playing as different characters that have the different abilities. It's a dice-driven cooperative game where you're rolling dice that have different faces that give you different actions that you can take. Uh, you find it pretty difficult. I have not found it quite as difficult as you have. Oh, I.e., you suck! 
<laughs> I'm just say. saying, yeah. Uh, I think it might just be the, the the skill level difference is what it is. So uh, I, I do enjoy the record <laughs> quite a bit. Said. Um, I don't know, but he just said. He reinforced it. It does have a production <laughs> that is going to, you, you. it is something I think to mention. It does have a production that, that raises the price of it. And, that being and, said, this is one of the few games that I think the normal version <clears throat> yes. is better than the Kickstarter version. Mm -hmm. No, because it's all deluxe, basically, right? It is kind of all Those deluxe. Those metal things are not as nice as oh, the acrylic classic. Mean. The acrylic yeah. classic looks better. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. This is the yeah. OG Rising Sun, is what you're saying. I mean, not Rising Sun, uh, Red Rising. Oh, oh, where the, the original is edition. better than the collector's. Yeah, maybe in a way. In a way, there's not. Will that be as number forty nine? I wonder. It will not be. No. This one has fallen a bit for me. I still like it, but again, the difficulty keeps me from coming back to all the time. Now, have you reviewed the expansion? I have not yet. Uh, Ian O'Toole, if you're talking about this game, I didn't know he worked on this game. In the here in the live chat. Oh, uh, I didn't know we're doing calls. Hey, hey, um, uh, President Biden. Are we just really? Like randomly, are we just randomly <laughs> saying <laughs> Biden Ian in the chat? Right People's there, names. Though. He's right there in the chat. Ian O'Toole is in the chat. Mike just blew a gasket. I'm j no. Well, yes, he's a fantastic uh, artist and illustrator, but I didn't know he worked on this game. Is all I'm getting at. That's interesting. I didn't know that. That's all I'm saying. Mike, do you think, my pen? Mike, do you think this is the game that made Game Trace say, "Oh, we can make games," because they pretty much made. Every component. Of this this, box. this is more. Yeah, this has a higher proportion of game trays than any other game. However, unlike many of their more modern games, this one really works. It does for me. work well. Yeah. Game you trays did. is about 60 70 percent for me on the inserts in games. This one I like. Yeah. Yeah. There you All go. Right. You know, the graphic design for this game. Yeah, you still didn't tell cool. me. Are you going to review the expansion? I'd be happy to review the expansion because uh, yeah. I forgot we had it. It must be at your house. It is not. It's here somewhere. At his house. It's not at my house. With the drill. Although, I think I wish might I might be messing with it. Ah. All right, I'll never see it again. So we just spent seven minutes of Mike's <laughs> number 50 to the long time. This is not me. This is all, I blame you. My and number 50 tool. is Azul, stained glass of Citra. <laughs> mm. That's a good choice, see? It was 61 last time, 62 the time before that. I don't know why it's gone up, but just some other stuff, I think, yeah. fell and made room for it. Mm. Uh, this is still my favorite of the three. Um, this is the middle one of the three. Well, technically there's four now. I haven't played that. Uh, I think the reason I like this one is because of the... The pieces are very nice. They're translucent pieces. They're lovely uh, and, and lovingly made. The reason I like this one is because I like the timing. There's sort of a new thing to consider. Mm -hmm. And that is the timing of when you reset your worker or yes. whatever to the beginning of your available actions. Whenever you take tiles, they can only go to where your worker is or past him. And if it's past him, he, he goes to that spot. Anything behind him, you can't allocate to. So you have to skip a turn to go back to the beginning. That sounds like it would be painful. But if you use it smartly, it, you can hurt other people with it. It's great. Right? Because it's things you don't want. You'd be like, reset. You have to take. I love that. You it's know? the meanest one of the whole group. <clears throat> So the best one. That's, I that's like the it. They so call yeah. that the typewriter mechanism, where you. Ah, I'm going to reset. Yeah, one-way typewriter. Is what one-way typewriter. Ratchet. Ratcheting. Ah! <laughs> Ratcheting typewriter. Uh -huh. Ratcheting typewriter. <laughs> there it is. That's my fifty. I like the typewriter song by Leroy Anderson. Anyhow, mm, typewriter. That is not how the you song goes. You did so many it's words to me. <laughs> All right, my number 50 has Time been on the list yes. yeah. since the very beginning, just like the last two Boulder Dash tickets right. This one is now out of print. Um, Why is that on your list? Because Mayfair went out of business. Um, it's, it still might be in print from Cosmos, who it's originally from. This is Domain. Oh, this yeah, is, you love this. This is the better game from Claus Toyber. <gasps> I like this better than Catan, oh, although yeah. I do understand that Catan is much more accessible. So, But for me... This is a game I just keep coming back to. I played it, I think, two or three times this past year. Really? Really? Yeah, because every time I go to... I, really? I taught it at the gathering, because no one's ever played it. I'll be like, oh, you will like yeah. this game, because it's a very mean, it's very mean, area control game, where it, you see this board here in this picture. This is before the game starts, and then you build these walls and kingdoms, and you keep making your kingdom bigger and encroach on other people's kingdoms. Love it. It's straight up... It's really nice components, too. Yeah. It has a nice mechanism where you either pay to buy a card that you'll use in the future, I mean, pay to use a card, 
Or you can pick a card up to get money. Or no, you sell a card for money. I'm sorry. I'm saying that backwards. But yeah, either you've way. You've definitely played this three times this year. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> Liar. I would like to see someone reprint this game. I didn't just put it on my top ten reprints because it's very newly out of print. You okay, know? okay. And, and also, for all I know, Mayfair made 200 million of them because Mayfair did yeah. overprint their games. They are not. Yeah, I don't mm. Is this hard to get? No. I don't think. So, yeah. also, I don't think the demand is super high. This was always on that one shelf at Gen Con in the Mayfair sure. booth. Yeah, you know which one I'm talking about. Steel still Driver be there. and Toledo. Toledo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. With yeah. the dude with the with the uh, making the solar. <laughs> You're that one shelf where you can get all these games for like five bucks. Cat on a tin roof, yeah, yes, <laughs> for sure. But this is easily the best of all of those, and this one actually has pretty good critical acclaim too. Yeah, yeah. it just again, it's mean, so that does turn some people off. But I like it. Domain. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, the People's Choice number 50. I said interesting because I thought, well, I'm, I'm curious about this one. I don't know if I like it because of how mean it sounds. I didn't want to leave it at interesting and then shun you. Oh, I thought you were talking about your pick. Okay. No. So the People's Choice number 50. Is, is it interesting? It's very interesting. It's Tapestry. Tapestries. Oh! Not approved. Boo, boo, boo. Not approved. Wow. Oof. Shutting down the people. It's no. a great choice. What was people? it last year? Uh, last year it was 35. <laughs> oh! <laughs> get it? I get it! Uh, <laughs> yes! Burn! I still haven't played the... This is actually pretty high on my list to play the expansion, too. Yeah, we were... Actually, we were planning on doing that soon, so let's, you know, let's yeah. make that happen. Cat. Yeah, it was 35 last year, 57 before, and so this is 50 now. Uh, I mean, yeah, so the second expansion just came out. Yes. And so I, I think that people... I don't know, I, there's a lot, this game is popular, and I think a lot of people don't mind the whole imbalance controversy, because I don't know many people who have played this competitively enough to say, you chose that faction. <laughs> also, it's le it, it is less uh, rare and unique than people like to make out. There are a lot of games that have had these types of things. People don't flip out this much about Terra Mystical changing up their things, and other asymmetrical games my changing up their that. things. I like the I like Tapestry. I think it's mm -hmm. fine. I, I had to just get over the fact it's not a Civ game. Right? Yeah, it's not. It's Civ themed. It's a track game, which is why it is. Yeah. you two um, like it. Ratchet right. track. The ratchet track game. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it's not quite how this one works. It's just a track game. I like it, but I disagree about the imbalance thing. I think the imbalance thing is a bigger deal because if you get one of the quote unquote bad factions, one that had a bunch of extra points, some of them feel bad. A lot of games have these factions that you play and you're like, Oh, this one's I, this is no good, and you're like, no. Once you learn to play it, right. it's good. If only there were twenty or thirty different ones you can pick if you don't want that. I understand that, but I'm saying if your first game you might play and you're like, oh, and you don't have a good experience, that part would bother me a little. Maybe sure, but I guess if I were teaching the game to somebody the first time and I knew they were picking a faction that has some type of a bit of a of a disadvantage to a newer player, I would say. You know, I would suggest, play whatever you want, but I would suggest, or at least be aware of Oh, you're this. nicer than me. That faction wouldn't even show up. I'd be like, here's well, the available the faction. They're like, Clock says 20. I'm like, I got 16. That's the hey, other you option, fixed too. It. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's the people's choice for number 50. a lot of excuses. <laughs> Tapestry. <laughs> let over here. All right, my number 49 is the new game to my list this year, and it's because it's a brand new game. Did I introduce it to you? No, I introduced it to you, as a matter of fact. Wow, self-serving much? <laughs> I introduced it to Z, although we actually discovered it together. Now you should know what I'm talking about. I'm calling it Vagrant Song. It's number 49's Vagrant Song. That's oh. absolutely right, yeah, yeah. This is- That was uh, already on my list, right? Yes, it's a crossover. Yeah. Um, you know, just a, just a really, really fantastic game that I suspect is going to move up the list rather than move down it. The more I play it, the more I explore it. Oh, um, yes. You like that? What? The capsules? I'm doing it. I oh, 100%. How yeah. did you know? Because you looked at the television yeah. and went, yeah. When we, <laughs> when we saw it at, um, when we saw it at Gen Con, it had the, cap, the, the capsules. Wow. I can't believe I just thought of this now. So you didn't. I'm, Dom, you saw it on the television. Right. <laughs> no, actually, but I should have thought of it earlier. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a quacks thing. A lot of people did it for quacks, too. But yeah, I'm waiting for my actual copy to show up. We have one here in the library, but I'm going to definitely put those those tokens I on I love it. those coin yeah. capsules for some games. This one, it would work so There's well. There's a lot yeah. of games I feel like they're very superfluous. Right. So it's, it's a cooperative 
campaign style game. Uh, you talked about it, so I won't belabor it, but a really unique theme, a very clever, and I do want to just reiterate one point I made when you talked about it, which is that this is not a game that just gets by on its theme and aesthetic alone. Mm -hmm. There's really clever mechanisms behind it, so don't think that it's just about the look. It's a really good game. There we go. Number 49, Vagrant Song. That's I also you... like to put out a small thing here. Every time we mention this, or the other one, People say, oh, Cuphead. Just as a clarification. Cuphead, Cuphead's not original. 1920s existed, <laughs> right. okay? I, it's like, yeah. There were cartoons back then. Like, oh, this is a ripoff of Cuphead. Cuphead's a ripoff of Steamboat Willie. I mean, what, are we, what are we talking about <laughs> I mean, here? Come on. Yeah, yeah, it's just always... weird, right? That yeah. mem the memory of that is it just goes back to Cuphead? Right. It's no. like a few years old. Right, 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 yeah. It's a look. It's the kind of Fleischer cartoons. Thing. Cuphead was a revolution. I don't understand mm. with all these IPs and everything. Yeah. I shun IP games entirely. Your number 49 My is... number 49 is Marvel <laughs> Champions. <laughs> there we go. Well, Marvel okay. Champions. Uh, really? <laughs> yes! And it is new to the list, and it has climbed up this quickly. This one... Is he going to rip off his face and he's Roy Cannonan? He's, yeah, he's a sucker, man. He just he, he, Upon, he bit into the to the Roy Cannonan. I really hype. did. I, I got it. I got a bite of that apple. That's right. And it has um, it has flooded my senses <laughs> with Marvel goodness. Um, look, I've become a bigger and bigger fan of Marvel. I've even read some comics now. I think I qualify as what some would call a nerd. <laughs> Thank you. Finally. That's um, our judgment. Nerd. And uh, be this nerd. is a game that I hadn't really dug into too much. Mm -hmm. You know, my first blush with it was at four players. It was a heady game. It is yeah. a game that then, you know, again, they do a lot of cannibalization of, they cannibalize a lot their own systems. Yeah. Fantasy Flight with their living card games. This does that in some ways. Playing it a lot more, playing solitaire, you know, running a character, or even two players. Yes, it's definitely grown on me, you know, mm. and, and um, discovering the, the the characters, the new things you can do. And it's kind of gotten simpler, too. I mean, mm. that sounds weird, but I've discovered it's simpler than I had first thought. The other living card games of its ilk... Mm. Like Arkham, LCG, and even the Lord of the Rings, I would say are more complex than this one. I would agree with that. Yeah, mm. so, yeah, I really like it. It's, I've been having a good time with this one. 49, I, Marvel Champion. Here's my biggest surprise. I, I didn't, I thought you were just okay on the game. I've got this game now, and I've got a bunch of the stuff. Ah, oh, this is good, yeah. I mean, I've mm. been getting all those extra packs and just throwing them away. Uh, I've been uh, dumpster right diving. in the trash. That's not true. <laughs> No, it's All true. Right. My part was true. My number 49 has been on the list for three years. Last year, 54, so it's moved up a bit. A fantastic expansion came out for it. I also got a playmat, although I might be the only person in the world with a playmat for this game, and that's Aquatica. Oh! I, I, this I, guy, this I, guy. Mm-hmm. I, I like the playmat. The playmat was part of the... Yeah. I can't help it. I like it. If you come to the Dice Tower Convention... Except the cruise, we have the playmat for this. Yeah, I do really like playing on that. It is nice. Um, man, I, I'm a big fan of the mechanism. Have a bunch of cards in your hand, play them until you have to play one to pick them all back up. Yeah, yeah. It's not used that much. Not it, too much. Yeah, it's not I mean, overused. Concordia is a big example of it, but Aquatica, I really like that concept. Um, I like the sliding up. That's not used in any other game where the. The cards you pay and you slide them up. Yeah, and, and whatever's then, showing mm -hmm. is a power. And then there's a power to slide more right. up. And then the little manta race. This game is just it's just cool. I like the theme. I think the theme works. It's fast. It's not that long. It's just a solid game. And the expansion just is more basically more stuff. Which yeah. makes me happy. Gives you a, a different end game goal. That's cool. Yes, yeah. but that's more stuff. It, yeah. It doesn't it feels add natural. like six it, new rules. No, not at all. Not yeah. at all. Right. Yeah. I think this is one of those games where the production, you didn't have to have that thing where you slot the cards into and slide them up. At first I thought, why is this here? But it's really it's neat to really do that pushing. Good. If this game came out 10 years ago, you'd put a cube on your card right, and, and move, move the up. cube up, and then they would all get messed up over the course of the game. This right. production is phenomenal and makes the game more playable. Yeah, Agreed. True. Very true. Agreed. All right, People's Choice for number 49, and I must say that I very much agree with the people here, is Paladins of the West Kingdom. Oh! This is 
this is the biggest and the the heaviest game that's come out of Garfield Games. Yes. I would I would say, and uh, it is. It's almost sort of a worker placement type game, but you have your own player board you're putting the pieces out onto, and you are just trying to make these great combos of, of actions. Uh, it started last year for the first time on the list at number 33. So this is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's. Yeah, I think that was like the, the shine. These games kind of settle in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. But the, uh, an expansion just came out for it. I don't think the expansion is going to make it more broadly appealing, but right. I think that the fan base who already really loves it is going to kind of relight their uh, their their love of it because it's uh, it's something we'll be looking at shortly. Yeah. And I don't want to say too many of my thoughts on it, but I think people will like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go number forty nine, Paladins of the West Kingdom. My number 48 is a game that um, is kind of one of, I guess, my games. It's, it's one that shows up on a lot of my you lists. You designed it? Solitaire. I, it, I champion this game a lot, and not a lot of other people really talk about it, and that's fine. Maybe it's more of a niche game, but my number 48 is Vengeance. This is a game where it is basically a revenge movie in a board game. It's about golfing. It is about golfing, yes, but the idea behind it is that you are somebody that has been wronged in some way by one of these gangs, these street gangs, and the beginning of the game is, is basically where you find out who has harmed you and how, mm -hmm. and that's going to affect your oh, player you? board. Absolutely, yeah. Like, it, did I kill your family? It'll be something like, no, it'll be something like a broken jaw. This person get, from this gang gave you a broken jaw. This person did this, and some... Is, is kill your dog in there? I don't think be. so. I don't think Aww. they did the, to the John Wick thing. Um, but they've, the, so it'll, some of it will that, be, so. yeah, some of it'll be oh, yeah, physical stress, and so that's a particular stat. Some of it will be mental stress. That's a different stat. Anyway, that's the beginning of the game, and then you go through the montage phase where you're basically getting skills. They're going to help you go and get your revenge, fight it back against these bosses and their minions in these dens. It's a dice puzzle game. There are some issues. I put it right out there. It's a huge production with a whole bunch of minis that are absolutely unnecessary. It's a Kickstarter thing. But the dice puzzle is great. I love it at lower player counts. I wouldn't want to play this at four. Too much downtime. But for a single uh, player or two players, I really think that it does a great job of implementing a really unique theme, and it does it well. So there we go. That's yeah. my number 48, Vengeance. I like it. I need, I, I just like, every time you talk about it, I, I want to play it just so I can do the montage phase. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd be like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go through the fighting. You don't want to do the puzzle one? Yeah, yeah. The puzzle dice part? Mm. My number 48 uh, is one of... The games I champion, I suppose, yeah. uh, that is a party game. I I talk about it a lot. I literally have heard no one else ever talk about this. It's been as high as, probably higher than this, but the from the data I have, 24. Uh, compatibility. Ah. <laughs> compatibility is a... Arguably the best game of the decade. Yeah, arguably. It's sort of like a matching game in which you have a partner. You, there's different modes to play, but this is how you want to play. You have a partner, the topic is revealed, and then from your identical decks of cards, you pick four or five cards that you associate with that thing, and then rank them. And you're hoping to match them. If you pick the same card, but in like not at the same spot, you get a couple of points. But if it's in the same exact spot, like my first is your first, then you get three points or whatever. That's it. That's the game. And you play until you wrap around on this little track. It's, by the way, impossible to find any pictures of this game. <laughs> anyway, that's the oh, best thing really? you could have told. I, I could have brought That's weird in. because it's... It's like at every thrift store in America. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll stop by the Goodwill right, on the yeah. way home then. Uh, Not, no, our thrift stores here in Miami have zero games. Yeah, I don't true. know if y'all noticed that. That's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah. There are no games in stores around here. I would love to get another copy of this that has different artwork, because I know they've, they've sort of refreshed the pool of, of images. Do you mm. feel like this might be something that would be fun if we got one for the Dice Hour Library? We could make our own decks of cards for this. Yeah, that's true. As long as you do, you got to do we're six, not, I we're guess. We're not selling it. Yeah, you just print out six decks. Like, yeah. you know, I made the custom faces deck. Mm-hmm. That would be a fun thing to do for compatibility. Yeah, I like, true. and some of the cards yeah, just have a word on them. Although I don't... Prefer those as much as the pictures. Yeah. Some have just a color. It's just black. It's just red. Yeah. They're like, it well, those are a picture it's of a clown. It's a little cerebral, though, mm. you know. Mm. Um, 
And it leads to a lot of interesting conversations where someone reveals something, you're like, what? The word was donkey. What is this? You know, um, it's never donkey. I do love that that's always your go-to. That is though. your the go-to. The word is always donkey? Oh, no, but it might goat. be scary and you put clown. Hoop, hoop. <laughs> anyway, compatibility is a great party game. Um, a subdued one, certainly. Not yeah. like a shouty kind of party game. But one that is very pleasant to me. And uh, I enjoy it a lot. So, 48. My number 48, I think it's been on my mind more easily because I was just sorting it out. Um, and that is Battle Lore Second Edition. Mm. Oh, now I keep holding out hope that Fantasy Flight is going to retheme and republish this somehow because it's this game is so good. And it, what's funny is this is based on Richard Borg's um, uh, Command, Command and color. color System, and it's the least like them, and yet it's my favorite of the groups. You were just talking about this on this morning's board game breakfast. Yeah, I was, but I, I, I wasn't even talking. This one is this one's like such a hard right from it. it okay. the, the way that you simultaneously set up your army is amazing. Mm. I wish more games did that. You basically just put, you you pick your army, mm-hmm. and then you put a tile down in all the board spaces, but a lot of them are blanks. Yeah. And you both do that simultaneously. You flip them up and then set your armies up. It's a great gotcha. way to simultaneously do that. You actually get to move monsters around and fight with them, which so many games, like toy with you that you can do it mm-hmm. and then they don't let you do it. Right. It has three, the box comes with two factions. There's a third one, the Undead, which I like a lot and they all had an, ex, an expansion which gives them more units and it's enough but I still, this is one of the games that if they did a Star Wars version of this, mm. I would fall out of my chair after having pressed buy <laughs> because that would be super exciting. Star Wars, yeah. Okay. Star Wars will work because you, you only need like three or four factions and you they have different stuff. So many Gungans. Mm-hmm. Oh, Wookiees versus Gungans. I want this really bad. Fastest you know. battle in history. Yeah, that would work though. <laughs> I like that. I would take some Gungan units in my Wookiee army, and the Wookiees would be like, run out there and draw the enemy fire. I like that. Look, to be fair, it might, Misa depend, going. It might depend on, on, on <laughs> whose home turf you're in. If you're underwater, I don't know what the Wookiees are going to do that well. <laughs> you I think are your fan with you. <laughs> and it won't. Now, Battle Lore. Second edition. Very important there. First edition was fine. Second edition's amazing. All right. Okay. All, All right. right. The People's Choice for number 48 is a uh, kind of a party social deduction game. It's called Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. Mm. There it is. Fire. This yep. has been discussed uh, at least on your list, I think. Zane, I had right? it on there, yeah, at some yeah. point. It's, it's, uh, it's 64 for me. Ooh. It's a social deduction game. Someone is the murderer, and then the other players are trying to solve who done it? This is one of the few that I haven't played on this chunk of the list. Oh, actually, this is great. I've always wanted. This is really. This is Did one. Did we not put I this on the catch definitely... blues for you? It's it's somewhere on that list. Yeah. Even Actually, if you're I old think that is social coming. deduction. This is such an easy one to get played. Right? Would you say? Even if you're someone who's like kind of burnt out of social me. deduction games. That's me. I'm not a big. I would still recommend guy. this one. Yeah. This that's one is I'm, different enough, yes. yes. That's why I'm interested in playing it a lot, actually, because it's the way that everyone, you, you guys always talk about it, right? There's information shared from the get-go. There's suspicion. There's interest from the first round. Yeah, yes. right. And that sounds great. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So, uh, and I think that'll resonate with a lot of people, as it's number 48, oh. Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. All right, my number 47 is a Euro game from acclaimed designer Bruno Catala. Z. I don't Z's care already. what it is, it's going to be good. <laughs> this is a game that I feel like is uh, doesn't get a whole lot of attention. It's definitely not one of his more esteemed games, um, and I think the look of it might have something to do with it. My number 47 is Imaginarium. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, this isn't your top 100? I really, really this is probably like this game a, a lot. Is this one of your least favorite Catala games? This is not one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing I just said. No, I own it. So yeah. if it was one of my least favorite, I would have gotten rid of it. Really? I, I thought you wanted them all. No, I've mm-hmm. gotten rid of plenty ah, of Catala games. Yeah. They're hot garbage. <laughs> Some I've kept. Yeah, This no. I've kept. All right. But... It is obtuse, for it sure. Is. It's got some rough edges. It really does. It does. It, it's one of the hallmarks of his designs, I think, oftentimes, are they are pretty clean, and, right. and, and this does not. But I think it's worth it. And I think the, 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 I think the look of the game <clears throat> befits the feel of the game, which is it's kind of mechanical, kind of odd, but satisfying Stop to me. Kind of. 
No, it, yeah, it's it's the a artwork is a hard pill I, to swallow. I love the artwork. See, that's the thing. I love the aesthetic of it. I like the bidding. It has that kind of cool. Cathal is really good about bidding for turn order. I mean, <laughs> th yes. this does that very well. I like the fact that your actions are constrained. You take two actions a turn, but they're connected to like these clock hands, and so you have to really. Be and they clever. move together, right? They move, they move together, together yes. So. so you have to mm. be careful about how you're manipulating your actions so you can set yourself up for future turns. They have some neat special powers that you can draft into your kind of pool. The way that the cards work, I think, are interesting, where you know you can pair up certain cards that make the original card more powerful, and you can you're basically building machines is the, the theme, and you could tear them apart. Unique game, but it is odd. It's very odd, but it yeah. really works for me. I like Imaginarium a lot. 47. So, I think you're supposed to be building, like, dreams. Or yeah, it's, like it's a, a dream factory. factory. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, a ridiculous yeah. thing. There's it's a insane. lot of games about dreams. For yeah, sure. Because it allows you to, to, to do anything. Yeah, you can do whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what's that so. mechanism for? It's your dream. It's all a dream, it's dream right? Yeah. yeah, you can <laughs> Who cares? Have, I, have you played the two-player version of this yet? I have not played this at two. All right, I'll bring in the Nicodemus. Oh, okay. Two player game. Yeah, yeah, of this. I've not played that. Yeah, and I'll you, I'll show you. You that. and I played the expansion, which neither, neither one of us loved. It was but okay. I, it was okay. I agree. I played it but with again, the expansion But again, it was very much first. in line yeah. with the game. It's right. like the game is kind of obtuse. Yeah. The expansion was kind of weird. Yeah. You guys have not sold me one bit on this. I game. don't think you'd like it. I no. don't know if you would. Yeah, I like the it. The two player one. I'll bring that in okay. and show it to you. I do want to you. try that because I think that. I, I'm, sure that your own. Be, <laughs> I'm sure this game could be. I'm sure this game could be developed got two. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, my yeah. 47 yeah. is new Sorry. to the list. Yeah, cut off there. And we yeah. should continue. Let me let me continue this this uh, Mike Delicio love. This oh. is a game he showed me. Well, uh, very recently, actually, at the retreat. Disapproved. <laughs> this is Floriferous. Oh, Floriferous man. is a lovely, yeah. lovely little game. I knew you really liked high it. Does not yeah. compete, obviously, head to head with like a big war minis on. That's not the point. You can't treat it like that. You can't do that. Kind well, that of Cover, I was expecting, yeah, actually, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Battle Lore. <laughs> it is, I would call this Battle Lore 3rd Edition. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're all dead. These mm -hmm. flowers the are flowers growing will upon rise their again. graves. <laughs> yes, they are. Um, it's a drafting <laughs> sort of selection game. Uh, a little bit of a me mechanism similar to King Domino, in which you can take something closer to the bottom of this selection, and by the way, the very, very bottom thing is a scoring opportunity. You want that. The only way you score. That's the only that you've mm -hmm. got to have some of those. But the lower you are in that that chosen column, right? You take either the first thing, second, whatever. Depending on where you end up, that's the turn order for picking next. So if you take that very bottom thing, you're last on the next choice. Clever, simple, mm -hmm. works very well. Um, and then it's all about this sort of again set collection, collecting the things you need, getting a scoring opportunity that works with what you've been doing already, or just pick one and then focus on that after the fact. It's quick, it's gorgeous, as you saw, uh, very well constructed. It's just a pleasant, beautiful game. It's it's, it's hard to not kind of fall in love with it. Yeah. You know, it's it's a lovely little thing. So. Yeah, Floriferous. And the crazy, thing, like the crazy thing is that if you want to be a jerk, you can play this game pretty mean. Because it's all open information. Yeah. You, can see, you can see what everyone's uh, scoring cards are. That's how they're going to score. This person needs pink roses. I'm going to hate draft the pink rose. You know what I mean? Who? Does it help you to take the pink rose? It might. Depends. It depends. That's the see, thing. I'm only for that if it helps you, too. Yeah. It's not a mean game. I'm saying you can play it that way. So it's, I don't know. I, I think this game has a little bit more than it first might mm -hmm. present. Yeah. The, the, the decisions you're right are really clever. All right. Here it is. Last year, I thought my number 47 would probably fall off the list. It did not. It was 47 last year and 47 <laughs> this year. Um, you were so wrong. This one I'm playing solo, mostly, although I did play a fantastic game of this with Mike and Roy. Oh. Uh, this is also about dreams, and yeah. this is Ether Fields. Wow. You thought this fall, would fall off your list, really? Well, I still... And I still do, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. I feel like once I've gotten to my fill of ether yeah. fields, I won't go back to it again. I agree. Um, mm. Because you go through and there's all these weird dreams. Now, I want to give a caveat here that I'm playing with, uh, with the new, um, what what uh, Awakened Realms kind of snidely said, the baby rules, but I don't care. <laughs> you know, the I'm skipping a lot of those, what are they called? The... Side dreams or the little the, side the, dreams. The, the, yeah, whatever. I'm not here the for the slumbers. side dream. I'm here the for the slumber. main event, the slumbers. Right. 
Uh, but I, man, every dream I go into, I'm like, oh, this is a horrible dream. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's fun to try to figure it yeah. out. But there's some pretty horrific stuff in there. Yeah. I mean, like, what your nightmare might be. Sure. I, I don't know. I just, I, I enjoy the story a lot. And I also enjoy when one thing works and something else. I'm more than halfway through it now, which is not very fast, probably, for some people who played it. But, and I, like I said, I think when I get to the end, I'll be like, and done. Hopefully it will be not a time story's ending, because that yeah, would irritate yeah, me. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I, I still like it a lot, and I think it's really unique. I considered... It is. Tainted Grail, I say this, I think both... They're, they, they have a lot of similarities, although they're very different games. But they make me feel the same way. Mm. Tainted Grail is just is dark. Etherfield is also dark, but Etherfield looks light sometimes. Yeah. Which, you know, like if oh look, it's a little some dancing ballerina figures who are trying to kill you. <laughs> that doesn't bother me as much. Yeah. And everything. It's it's not grim dark. No, it's not. It's Tainted Grail is grim dark. So it's more ever, like it's more like Tim Burton esque. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So if I ever send of a league of assassins to murder you one day, tutus all around, tutus, mm -hmm. I would be like, pointed, pointed <laughs> Why are you sending leagues of assassins to kill me? I'm just saying if I said I qualified it with if mm -hmm. legally binding, worrisome. There it is. All right, people's choice for number forty-seven is a big, epic space game. It is called Star Wars Rebellion. Ah. This is a two-player head-to-head game. Uh, one player, it's asymmetric. One player is the rebellion. And the other side is the Empire, and you know it's it's just big, sprawling, epic. If you want to control the Death Star and blow up planets, this is the game for you. Uh, this was I, oh I failed to mention. So this has been on the list for uh, six years now. Uh, this is currently number forty-seven. Start off at forty-eight, kind of dipped around. I failed to mention on Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. Been on this list just as many times. And this is the highest year for Deception, Murder really? in Hong Kong. Really, I blame you two for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, sorry, I congratulate you yeah. two for that. <laughs> but with Star Wars Rebellion, this is, uh, yeah, so start at 48. It's kind of done a little bit of a U-curve thing. So, yeah, I, I mean, people love this. I think it's very, got a, a, a nice devoted following to it. And uh, I anticipate it'll still be on the list for, for many years. I still have yet to play this. Me too. This is one I need to play. There's a two-player game, right? Yeah. Only. Two player. There's a four-player mode. Nah. nah. To play I have heard some it's people long. say they like the four player mode. They're wrong. Nah. It's pretty long. Right? Two player. <laughs> it's like a three hour I've never game. played it. it and is. I can tell yeah. you this would not be No, a it's a two player, player game. game. You literally just say, you get to control the land units, I control the units. That's not, does not make it a four player game. Mm -hmm. I could do it with any game. Right. And for checkers, I could be like, these are yours and these are mine. <laughs> right. Come on. Sorry. No worries. So that's people's choice number 47 Star Wars Rebellion. I like that one too. <laughs> My 46 is a crossover with Tom what? on this very section. Wait a minute. Um, what is it? You can't be Etherfields. Oh, it's Aquatica. Why couldn't it be Etherfields? Because you don't like Etherfields as much as I do. It's Aquatica. <laughs> Zing. You yeah, liked it, but not I that did, much. but not that much. Aquatica I really like. Now, it has dropped a little bit for me, but that really is just because other games have come in. This oh, is oh, a sorry. fantastic, fantastic game. And, uh, you know, Tom... Did a great job of describing why it's so good. The things you mentioned as your favorite elements are my favorite elements, too. I really like the, the way that the cards kind of slide. It's not just a gimmick. It actually, like you said, Chris, it works. It makes the game easier to teach, easier to play. The time frame is perfect. To me, this game never feels like it runs too long. If anything, sometimes it feels like it's too short, but in the good way, where it's like, oh, I was one turn away from doing this. You still feel like you were able to, to get some clever combos out there. It, it never outstays its welcome. Beautiful look, I love the theme. Really, really good game. I'm glad this was a game that, uh, you know, not to toot our own horns too much, but I feel like the Dice Tower Essential has made it more, you know, visible out there with Arcane Wonders, of That's course. That's the point. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm glad that this game is getting the, the, the attention that it deserves. That's the joke. <laughs> this, is a, this is a game that could have been kind of lost. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. Good stuff. My number 46 is a game that my predictive would be on my list. It's a roll and write game. Or whatever. <laughs> Flip oh, card don't. over. I know which one. You know. Mm -hmm. What is it, Mike? Trails of Tucana. Trails of Tucana! is a little sort of map root building sort of game 
Very neat. You are trying to connect various things on this board. I love the main twist here for root building. I think it's a very cool idea. You have a deck of cards that all show land types. You flip over two of them. You have to draw a line that goes from one of those to the other one. It, it bridges the hex side between those two land types. That is so neat. And I don't think I've seen another game of this kind, or any game of that I can think of, that does that. It sounds like it shouldn't work that well. You know what I mean? It sounds like, yeah. oh, it's going to be a mess. It'll just be sort of like pieces of line everywhere. But it works really well. Yeah. And then the earlier you do something in the game, the more times you can sort of score that same thing. Every time a scoring comes up, you score these connections and you'll score them again if you, you know, if you do them earlier. Pretty clean, very straightforward. Um, it does do, yes, some of the same things these other games from the same company do. They've, they've found a groove as far as yeah. roll and write things that work well, like score whatever now. Next round, your score has to be higher than the previous, or you get zero. You know, those kinds of yeah. things. So, But yeah, I really like this one. This is one I've, I've taught a decent amount, and I I like teaching it. It's 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 clever, and, and rediscovering that cleverness as I'm teaching and playing again is always pleasant. So, Trails of Tucana, 47, 46. Well, almost a year one. ago that you taught me this, and I know that because it was at the uh, Dice Tower Cruise that you taught me. Mm, okay. So, mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to teach it to you again. I don't want to, like, I'm out. Mess with the timeline continuum, but a year ago, there was definitely no, there was no cruise. This was two years ago <laughs> that you taught me this. Did I, I miss the cruise? Because it was the cruise. <laughs> wow. You're that right. was two years ago. <laughs> yes. All right. Wow, you've aged well. You're so <laughs> handsome. My number 46 was 97 <laughs> last year. <laughs> For several years before that, it was in the hundreds. It started at 69, now it's all the way up to 46. Okay. And I just taught this game a few weeks ago. I taught it to many people this year. And I guess that's why it's up on higher on my list. And that is On the Underground. Now, wow. the new version of this came out, which didn't hurt. That Looted Creations version is pretty. I mean, that cover is one of my favorite covers. Um, I like the board. I, I like the fact that it. it. I wonder who did the graphic design and art for this. I wish I'd... Is it your boy? Theodore you know, Tool. It's Ian O'Toole. Then just say Ian O'Toole. Yeah, come of... on, Tom. Ridiculous, It's man. Ian O'Toole who was in the comments a while ago. Oh, I'm sorry. He Hang has on a definitely second. left since. <laughs> Sir. Oh, he moved along. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyhow, there's two maps now, so you can play, yeah. and there's slightly different rules. It's like Ticket to Ride-ish style. Right. Man, this game is great. I really enjoy the... The, the, the concept of it, the lazy guy walk, you know, trying to get around London or Berlin and... And then um, just moving along, you're trying to make him use your roots. Or you can ignore that a little bit and just connect things on the board to get points. I must need to play I, I must need to play this again because I bounced off this so hard when I played it. Oh, I, and not, not just me, it was the whole group. And I almost wonder if it How was How many people like did you play with? Do you remember? Five or six? I will maybe? not play this with more than three. Oh, yeah. No, this was a big group of people. And, and it felt like every time you had to move the... We had, there was only one person at the table... That we felt comfortable that could figure out where the guy was. That I don't disagree on. It definitely is a little bit of like, how does the guy move? Yeah. I can figure it out pretty quickly, yeah. and I like that aspect. I'm like, ooh, he's going to do this. Does mm -hmm. he often ride your train more than other people's? <laughs> <laughs> he does indeed. But that's yeah. not because of that. Mm, um, it's a lot of fun on All the right. underground. All right. People's Choice for number 46 is a cooperative deck building game called Clank Legacy. Ah. Wait, is this one co uh, cooperative? No, it's not, right? It is the farthest thing from cooperative. Oh, yeah, yeah no, sorry, I misspoke. Yeah, Clank Legacy. I would never is make a... such a mistake. <clears throat> sorry, deck wow. building. Okay, Legacy on game. the underground? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to my top 10 cooperative games mm. from last year's list. I mean, keep it. Oh, sure. Oh, I'm talking yeah. about keep that hate on the underground. Mm. All right, so number 46 this hate. year. It was number 60 last year, so climbing up. Yeah. Uh, I think it was. Was a fairly new last year, uh, but also legacy games take a while to get through. That's true. So uh, I, I wonder. I haven't played this one, but I'd really like to. This I is think that, the best legacy game. So I think that deck building games do lend themselves well to those kind of permanent changes. You can swap cards in and out. You can upgrade cards and whatnot. If that's the case, I would really like to try that. If, you know, the, the map can change over the course of the campaign as well. Better so, than all the pandemic legacies. Yeah, it's, For me, yeah. it's my favorite legacy. Oh, wow. Now, as, a, as an aside, I decided starting this year 
unless it's new and I want to push it on. I took all the Legacy games off because this was very high on my list last okay. year. I took Legacy. This I didn't say anyone else had to. I just took Legacy games off because they're such a one-time experience. Sure. That it's hard to keep comparing that year after year for me. That's very interesting. I, I feeling, yeah. generally keep them off my list for the same reason. I don't. I, I'd have to look. I don't know if I've. Yeah, but this was uh, last year. It was like eight for me or something. It was. I'm looking through pages that <laughs> don't even have my list on them. Did it? Did it take your place of Clank in general? You know, or or did you have Clank separate from Clank Legacy? No, Clank doesn't make my top 100. I, I really like Clank, but. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I just don't. I don't know what it is, but I, this game does not interest me. Yeah, I'm not terrible. No, that's that's reasonable. I don't. I don't. I don't know that much you would like it, but this chain. This one thing I want to see the legacy game is something different. Yeah. And every game of this feels completely different than the other ones. Like it's completely ten, different. Well, I mean, you're still playing the Clank game, but you're oh. doing different things every time. At, so, at any point, has it become a roll and write? No. Uh, pass. Mm -hmm. This. He's out. Sorry. I'm all about the roll and write. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a legacy game to me, but okay. Got a game. All right, they want to like to try. So anyway, that's People's Choice number 46, Clank Legacy. Up. My number 45. Whoa. <laughs> My number 45 is a crossover with the people. And uh, so queue up. This is a game that is getting a, that gets a strong reaction because as soon as it came up on the people's list, a bunch of people came into the chat to say how terrible of a choice it was. Okay. So now you can direct that hate towards me. And my number forty-five is Tapestry. Hate towards Mike. That's right. This is a civilization-themed game. That is a very important distinction to make. It is not really a traditional Civ game in the sense that most gamers would, would call it a Civ game, but it's a Civ-themed. And yes, there are potentially some balance issues, and I do not care because I feel like it's a charming game. It's a game that just lost 10 points. It's now 55 on my list. Um, <laughs> Look, the chat, the live chat has spoken, right? <laughs> anyway, it's 45, no biggie. But it's a game that I still enjoy playing. I, I like playing it just as a base game. I like the first expansion. I'm looking forward to the second expansion. Um, it's tracks, like you said. I find it to have... It's one of those things where it gives you a positive feedback loop, right? Like every time you're taking a turn, you're doing something, and it get better as you go along. So... Um, I'm concerned with what's going on over here. I'm making a note to fix that slide because I used the same template from last year. Ah! I used from year to year for these top 100s. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Anyhow, my job. number 45. I do find it amusing how much of your thing there was defensive. We weren't even saying anything. Tapestry I is trash. It. Balance <laughs> issues. <laughs> Man. That's what I'm getting at. Now, look, look this is a game hate, that hate, inspires hate. a lot made, of hate. It made the people's choice. Yeah. So people like it. Right. Overrated. You're right, yeah, see? There we go. Charming. Not oh, a fan. No. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I like it. You're free to not like it. Plenty Mike, you are do. tasteless. Okay. Uh -huh. No, that was not there. Oh, that was Z Garcia. <laughs> All right. Now you got to do it between every word. Yeah. Mike, you, Mike are, you are a hack. If there's ever one way to get me to ignore your comment, do it's to put a clap between, between yeah. every letter. Do you, or do you start it with, I was today years old when. Do you, okay, when you speak it, do, do you say it on the clap? No, or you do you do like, it? You are a absolute hack. You can dance to it. You can dance to it. Mike has no taste. All right, let's go move on. It's gonna be a hold down top ten. <laughs> That's yeah, how I, I read going. them when I see the claps in between the no, words. That may end up being like, uh, 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 you know. <laughs> I know. All right. Uh, My number forty-five was thirty last year. Twenty-four the year oh. before that. It's dropping like a stone. I expect it to be gone. Toot sweet. Toot sweet. Nagaraja Sweet. is my uh, 45. Oh, is this where you're rolling the weird dice? The weird dice, yeah. baby, yes. The Sticks of Doom, I like to call them. <laughs> this Ooh. is a two-player only game from the one and only Bruno Katawa, uh, working together with... Uh, who's he working with here? Um, On this one? Tail Rivieri. Tail Rivieri. Tail, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tail, yeah. Um, <laughs> what? No, I know Tail. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> he, works, he works with a lot of he people does. consistently. He did the loot. So I'm always like, which one of the people he works with? Ludovic Mavlock, he works yeah. with a lot. That was a, that's yeah. an old relationship yeah. there. They worked together on pretty, you know, back in the day. Bowser, yeah. 
Um, all right. Anyway, this is a two-player tile laying game, but to get those tiles, you got to win them. You're going to be rolling dice. Whoever has the most strength on the dice will be the one to actually claim the tile. But the the faces on the dice, and they are sticks, so four faces. Uh, they're not always strength, which is like a little gold pip. Sometimes it's just this little squiggle, and that's that symbol lets you play a card if you spend that. And then the cards do all sorts of things. Mm. Mess with your opponent, give you extra strength, uh, let you move these treasures that are on the outside of your board, swap them around, whatever. As you connect paths with your tiles, you reveal these treasures on the outside and you collect points. It's very neat, very beautiful looking game. I like that it's sort of a few small mechanisms combined into a really nice stew. I like mm -hmm. that about it. And I like a lot it's just like he did for, you know, Seven Wonders Duel, where you can have multiple ways to end the game, right? Yeah. In this one, there's a sudden death where the treasures go, I think, one through six, the different kinds. And you have to get to, like, 21 or whatever. But if all three sixes, the cursed treasures, are up, face up at the same time, you're eliminated. You lose. Doesn't Raptor do something similar, too, where it has, like, an instant win condition? I don't remember. It might. I may be off there. But yeah, you're right. That is isn't really kind of a cool thing. Where yeah. yeah. So you, if your opponent then flips one of them, mm -hmm. they just got six points towards the 21 or 25, whatever that they need. But you then can be like, I'm going to find the other ones and reveal them for mm. you. So you're helping them, technically. If you don't quite make it, you're helping right. them. But if you manage to pull that off, it's sweet. Because you just <laughs> force them to... Make themselves lose, kind right, of. Right, right, so right, right. Interesting. That's pretty neat. Mm. Uh, yeah, that is Nagaraja, my 45. All right, my number 45 was 59 last year. Um, if you backed the Dice Tower Kickstarter last year, you just got a card for this called Lobster, and that is Onitama. Oh, okay. Oh, it's like Lobster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like. It, it's like a kind of a chess move type thing. It's, yeah. Those are my favorite kind of cards. Yeah. This game is just. Such a great game. I mean, there's, again, this is one of those. I remember me and Z both like looked at each other after playing it the first time. We're like, this is a great game. I do remember that because very it was distinctly. a very not good looking game when it first came out. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the lots of looks kind of like the dragon, but sideways. Okay. Um, oh. Anyhow, it's just five cards and a few pieces, and then you can get more cards every time you buy an expansion for this game. You almost double the game. Yeah. With the number of different cards, if you like chess. If you think chess is a little too thinky, only time was back a little bit. Although yeah. it can get very thinky, but it's also very fast. Yeah, it's very yeah. portable. It appeals to almost everybody. I just love this game, Only Tama. I love that that the moves you can make are on the cards themselves, so that you're not having to concentrate on remembering how does this piece work, how does that piece work. You're just what, concentrating. And all of your that. pieces yeah. move those same ways. Those same way. yeah. That's great. And the passing them back and forth. Yeah, that's really the best smart. part for yeah, me. Yeah. Is that every time I do something. I'm making it available to, to you. you. Right. I got a sick crane move. Oh no! Don't do the crane on me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That crane technique will get you every time. Oh yeah. You know it. Kick to the head. <laughs> illegal. It was illegal. Uh huh. Okay. Sorry. People's Choice for number 45 is the other large-scale epic space game by Fantasy Flight. This is Twilight Imperium Fourth Edition. Mm. This has been on the list wow. uh, since it came out. As it was uh, 62, as high up as 31, 58, 45. So it's kind of done this little weeble wobble thing. It's back up at a, wow. at a higher number uh, at the moment. But do you notice it's like number four on Board Game Geek? Really? Yeah. yeah. Right now, is it yeah. really? It's really high. That's it's amazing. really high. I mean, and, and so obviously this has only been is, a list for a few Twilight years. Is Twilight Imperium first edition number one on Board Game Geek? <laughs> is that how that works? <laughs> first of many, if that's mm. what you're looking for. So obviously this has only been a list for a few years because third edition, I'm sure, was on the list for all of the previous years sure. that it was eligible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, people... People kind of have an idea what this game is about, and I think I a lot of people idea. really like it. Yeah, <laughs> I did have a few misconceptions, though, by the time I played it. I was impressed with it, uh, because it it was a little bit more uh, thinky than I thought it would be, but it's still also big, sprawling, epic space, roll dice, and blow each other up. Uh, but still, you know, a very smart game, and that's why people like it so much. Mm. There you go, 45 Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. Ooh.
My number 44 is the last game on this sheet, so I'm going to have to change sheets here in a moment. How Up embarrassing. 21, How embarrassing, Mike. 21 <laughs> points. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's a typical Friday night. This is up uh, 21, 21 places, and this is another game that I feel like has gone way under the radar. It's a Euro game through and through with a cool theme that we mentioned it on, as from an earlier game. It's not used enough. This is Coloma, set in kind of the gold rush, Wild West uh, era. This is a really clever, as I said, Euro game, where it, and it also has a magnetic wheel so I mean that makes it, it makes it better but it, it has the, this kind of a thing where you are simultaneously choosing the actions are around that central wheel there that you can see on your screen and you are everyone simultaneously with a face down card choosing which one of those actions that they're going to and depending upon if you have that spot to yourself or you're sharing it with one or more people that's going to affect how that action triggers um, but there are cards that you can play that kind of mitigate that and adjust that it's um, got a little bit of area control there in the top left, a, some really smart card play. It's a beautiful production, but I don't know that it ever went to retail, so I think that may be why it was harder to get a hold of. Uh, I don't know. Again, I feel like this has gone way under the radar. I think this is a very clever design that I don't apparently... Think this particularly went under the radar. You don't think so? A lot of people don't talk about this one. Oh, okay. Well, I hope that's true, because I think it's fantastic. I think it's a re-implementation of an earlier game uh, that was maybe called... I don't know, maybe Tombstone or something like that. This is the only version oh, of that, that I've I wouldn't played. know. But it, yeah, mm. this is the only version of it I've played, and I really like Coloma a lot. I feel like it does some very clever things that uh, are familiar, but with a little bit of a twist. So there you go, forty-four Coloma. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Number forty-four is Hank Aaron. <laughs> uh, I that enjoy that. True. I'm yes. leaking my list. People can mm. read that. Jeez. They're zooming in. They're pausing. Then you know what they do? Enhance. Enhance. Yes. Ah. That works in every TV show, yeah. Mm. I'm hacking right. into the system. He's cross hawking me. <coughs> mm -hmm. My number 44 is Sentient. Ah. Sentient uh, was 36 last time, so it's around the same spot. Um, it's a robot raggedy ant. I haven't played it in a while, but the game is a very smooth play. It's all about manipulating these dice that you randomly roll only basically ones in the game set them in their matching locations, and then the cards that you acquire that go in between the dice will manipulate those dice. They'll have in the center some scoring condition, and then in the corners, a plus symbol, a minus symbol, or an equal thing. You know, you either, and so you tick up the die, one's up, down, leave it alone. The card itself will score based on something very puzzly. You can already see how these things would connect to each other. Sometimes you don't, you don't want to move a die because it's already scoring for the card on the other side of it. And you can stop that by spending one of your little workers or one of your, I guess they're kind of like currency or yeah, strength or but whatever. But they are like little people. So they're yeah. little people. You can spend it by putting it on the card corner and canceling what it would do to the die. But then you don't have them for this little area control thing that's going on. Quite abstract of yeah, a game. Very. I mean, thematically, it's science fiction, but it <laughs> is very much whatever you want it to be. However, mechanically, this game, just like other J. Alex Kevern games, is condensed down to just what it needs. Mm. And I like that design philosophy. You know, yep. I think it's under it's underrepresented that design philosophy in, in today's nowadays, gaming. Yeah. 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 Uh, most people are just like, more. You know, more is better. You get the game, I give you an extra mechanism if you back it now, <laughs> and an extra box in which to keep all the other mechanisms you're going to get later. <coughs> okay. This is simple, clean, very nice. Sentient. I like this one a lot, too. My number 44 is uh, a very old game compared to many on the list. Uh, it's at cool. least... 25 years of 95, used to make 96? games then? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it is a collectible card game. What? Oh, wait. Battle Mac? Battle or over? over Battle Tech? Battle Tech or I do over, like that one a lot. Over it's overpowered. Over, over, yeah, overpowered. That's the one. Yeah. Overpowered. You giant nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The yes. Marvel one. Anyone who would like a card game based on the Marvel Universe. Mm. Who would that? <laughs> I. So I've actually, over the past couple of years, some people have been making like custom brew sets of this, and I've been getting all of them. Really? Custom yeah. brew. 
Is that a is that a common phrase people say? For coffee. Okay. So people have made cards that are new, though they never existed when they... Yeah, well, a lot of CCGs have this where, like, uh, the fan base gets together, and they play the game so much, they know, they're like, okay, right. and, and they make the cards, and I'm like, I assume they're all super balanced because you guys are smarter at this game than I will ever be. Sure, but, sure. Yeah. But they're okay. a lot of fun. Like, I, I just got a Spider-Man set that had a bunch of the Spider-Man from, like, the new cartoon and stuff. Oh, okay. But this game has so many problems when it originally came out, but it... I just have fun playing it. I, I, I don't know what to say. An adventure system in it has never been used in any other game that I know of. So in this game, it's four, you have four heroes against someone else. Three in the front line, one's in, re, in the reserve. You draw cards, and you always have to discard duplicates. So you can put a lot of good cards in your deck, but if you draw the same ones, you'll lose them. After you discard, you both venture, essentially you bet on your hand. You have seven missions, and you're betting those missions to who's going to win this round. You can also, at the beginning of it, just concede and say, I, I, I'm out. And your opponent will then win all the missions they ventured, which could win them the whole game. But you might do that so you guys don't get the crap beat out of them. I'm mm. seeing gears turning, and Mike and Z's faces are just trying to follow along. With yeah, well, it's just it's interesting, this venture, because if you, you have to get seven missions. So in the first turn, I could venture all seven missions. But if I do that, you draw five more cards. You get to draw. The more I venture, the more you draw. So there's just this back and forth bluffing. <laughs> if you like poker and betting, it's kind of like a mix between that and then a fighting game. Hmm. And I don't know. That's I've never seen another game do it. It's such a great game in that regard. Now, are the heroes balanced? They were terribly unbalanced at the beginning. The the, the rare cards were incredibly powerful. They then they're supposed to be. They're the rare cards. Uh, I'm not convinced that rare cards should be powerful. I think they should give be. them money. <laughs> okay, but they actually revamped it as time went by. They made a very substandard DC set. Um, Poor DC. Mm -hmm. uh, but but like I said, this group that's been doing it has been making more cards. Some of the underpowered characters I have cards for that make them better. I don't know. It's really fun. It's a really fun experience. Yeah. Right. But I also realize. It's a fun experience that I like. Sure. I would completely I understand a lot of this. Is this nostalgia? A lot of this nostalgia. Part of it's nostalgia, but there's a lot of games I played back then that I don't want to play anymore. Right. And I went back and played this over the COVID time period, and I was like, I still really like this game. That's what brought it on my list. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. Uh, okay. The rule set sounds like children designed it. No, it sounds like Tom <laughs> Vassell just is not explaining it well. So boo to you. <laughs> okay. All right, people's choice for number 44 is a big, large Uwe Rosenberg game called Caverna. Heard of it. Ah, the Hi, John, I grew up a lot of people. Look at that donkey. Someone played Isn't me the other day sweet? that Trying to get more people like Caverna all than now. Agricola. I wish I had that power. <laughs> <laughs> but if that was the case, Agricola wouldn't even be on the list. <clears throat> the power to do what? Someone said that it was my fault that Caverna that's better than oh, Agricola. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure it's Rosenberg's fault. Right, well, you know. Let's see. Caverna's been on the list since 2014. <clears throat> it's been high up as number 20 on the list. Last year's 45. This year's 44. So it's doing even better. Because of Tom. More Caverna. That's right. <laughs> because of Tom. That's the you Tom Vassell effect. You said it one time. No, I mean, Caverna is, uh, I mean, it's, it's immensely popular. This is, it, what this makes me think of is the conversation of, when is a follow-up or a sequel to a game more popular or more well-received than the original one? Very rarely. Very mm -hmm. rarely. I think I think that this is one of those cases. I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say what is exactly. Is the it vote, more the popular vote. now? Surely, but which one? I don't Agricola know. Agricola knocked the, the doors down uh, when Agricola, it came out. Yeah, sure. Agricola seems like it's almost like one of those there was Mount Rushmore games. games. Touchable, yes. Yeah. It is a Mount Rushmore uh, game. Yeah. Also, they are 50% the same game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But... I don't know, I'm curious what uh, over the years to see if there'll be more separation between yeah. the two, if one will yeah. really kind of rise to the top. So, in the meantime, that's People's Choice number 44, Caverna. All right, my number 43 isn't on this sheet! Here we go, let's get the dramatic reveal. Oh! I hope, I hope, I hope that's the wrong oh, sheet behind yeah, that. that would have been really bad. <laughs> it's grocery list. No. Here we go. Eggs, milk... My okay, number 43 got? is the same rating that it was last year. It was also number 43. This is a solo-only bag-building game. 
I know what it is. Coffee trader. Coffee roaster. roaster. Yes. This is a uh, coffee roaster. Uh, right now we are seeing the inferior uh, version of the game. This is the one that's most easy to get, though. So it's. I joke, it's not inferior. It's fine. I do like the kind of the charm of the original Sashi, which is a boutique Japanese publisher. Well, boutique here. Anyway, solo only game where you are trying to create the best roast. And you're doing this by trying to get ranges for your coffees. You're, you're building up tokens that are going to go into your bag that have different values on them. And as they roast longer, those numbers get larger. And you're trying to hit a range, basically, for whatever that particular blend of coffee is. You're also able to use these tokens to trigger off powers that allow you to manipulate your tokens and to manipulate your pulls. Uh, so kind of the end of the I guess round, is that you are pulling one by one these tokens out of your bag and trying to hit, you're putting them into a coffee cup, uh, cardboard coffee cup uh, kind of circular thing, and trying to hit those goals. It's a very quick game. I like it a lot. I think it's very charming. Um, it's not intuitive. Honestly. It is not. In, well, yeah, I think you're a lot of the You're explaining that. Games. I know the game already, and I'm like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But to someone, I imagine folks listening who haven't played... It doesn't. It's hard to describe. I don't think it's an intuitive game. It I really don't. I recommend if you want to learn game. this yes. game, play it live. Yes. So that you can have 40 people shouting at you how that to get the correct. rules right. Aww. That is correct. I still have trauma from that. Yeah. 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 But I played it till I got it right. Right, right. right. So, Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, there are some people talking get about. Get over it. Uh, there are some people <laughs> talking about uh, production issues with this version of the game. I, I, I kept the Sashi version. I'll just put there it to you. you. Go, I'll baby. put it to you that way. There you go. So, I'm starting to feel one. like you have a soft spot for Sashi. That's like I, your fourth game on your top do. 100. We both, we both do. do. Now he's put more on his list than you I've have. I've introduced him to every Sashi game. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? 42? No, 43. 43, yes. 43 is the game that Tom Vassell hates. He thinks it's hot garbage. I told him I liked it tremendously, and he said to me, to my face, you don't know gaming. <laughs> okay. I might be misremembering some of those yeah, details. Sure, anyway, sure. my number 43 is the Grand Carnival. The Grand oh, Carnival oh, yeah. is a... Um, oh, it's a Cuphead ripoff. I was going to say that. <laughs> this is what you call a Cuphead uh, ratchet ripoff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a tile laying game with two levels of tile laying. You first have to get the, um, the tiles that just allow you to build upon them. And some plots will just be the grass of this, the fair fields here. And some of them will be constructed upon. And then on top of that layer, then you put attractions. You are moving uh, visitors around this, trying to get them up all the way to the top of your board where the, the big top is, the big tent. Um, taking actions to collect all this stuff. And the one thought that I, the one thing I thought was really neat and clever and quick is that every round of the game and you play over like a week you have five actions of strengths one two up to five so if you you know if you want to use your strength three now you can move a guy three spaces up to the big tent to visit something along the way you can then use your five to take the fifth tile down a line and place that at some point you have to use them all though mm -hmm. and then they all reset and it's the next day, <coughs> the next round I think that's neat. It's very clean. It's not that punishing or thinky. Hmm. It's just clever. You got to know when to use one. You know when to. When am I okay just giving up the the one now? Uh, sometimes you have to say spend the five, but you can only go three steps. You just have to waste the rest of it. So I think that's neat. I really like this one and the look. Yeah, definitely helps. But the tile laying, the gameplay. It's just smooth, a real clean game. I like it a lot. The this is Grand one, Carnival. Yeah, he's not kidding. We really differ on this. I, I very much did not like this. It, one thing I think the theme and the game are very much almost counter. The game's about building a carnival, but you're not trying to build a carnival for people to come into. You're trying to build this weird combination of tiles. It just, I felt like it didn't work. You're following rules, not thematic rules. If that makes sense. Oh, it does. It does. Um. Can't tell if that was sarcasm, but uh. <laughs> oh, it does! It does. <laughs> um, no, I guess I get what you mean. It's also really but thinky, gosh. which I don't know. It just didn't match for this. That being said, my number forty-three is a very thinky game. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, 
They better have some thematic rules or I'm about to burn you. <laughs> has no thematic. Well, supposedly. Let me anyway, get that hammer real quick. this is a bit of a, a tie if I would do so because another game, a sequel to this game, came out this past year, yeah. but they are literally the same game. Oh. In fact, there's an expansion that lets you combine the two of them. My number 43 is Sproopolis. Oh, wow. But I could have put Agropolis because this it's is literally the same game. It's a solo only <laughs> game. Thematically, this is not bad, though. There are reasons you want to build things yeah. in one way sometimes. I guess they put something like, no pigs near the the road or whatever. Right. That's for the, the farm. Yeah. yeah, okay, I don't know. They, that they'll, one. they'll say something on the on the thing. And there, also, there's reasonings, the roads, you want fewer of them because there's traffic. less traffic. Yeah. Yeah. You would hate yeah. to be able to drive around town. Right. <laughs> that would be kind ridiculous. Of, they kind of try no, to I make mean, it they work. Don't, they want. I know, like, I played, I, I like this game a lot. I, I like really it, like this. I can't do it's, this. It's, too. it's one of the few that I don't <sighs> play solo that often. Although the, I had two so far in this list because either feels a solo. But sure. they, these are the very opposite extremes of solo gaming. <laughs> yes. No kidding. <laughs> this is a really tiny game where I'm, I'm actually sticking it in a dice tower library because you can technically play it with two. You and can. I would play this with two, this but is one only of the few two. I would probably play with two, although I still consider it a solo. And it would have to be someone that I kind four. of meshed with pretty well. well. Solo is better, I think. I agree. I, I can play it pretty quickly, too, though. I'm flipping yes. the card over, and this goes here. And I, if you mess up, you're like, eh, shuffle, do it one. again. Yep. And how many, there's like, how many combinations? Wow, it's well, there's 18 cards. 18 yeah. times 17 times 16 divided by 3. Yeah. That's a lot. Yes. And mm -hmm. I know someone, I've read on the air, some people played them all. Wow. Oof. All That's right. amazing. They okay. just go through all the combos, and then when you add a grapple, it's Imagine and, what happens to that person when someone gives them ether fields. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they melt. They have to go through all the combinations. Yep. Well, there's expansions too, so that person's that ah! person's ear just got wrecked. That's it. They're done. <laughs> all right. People's choice for number forty-three is Res Arcana. Mm. This is fire. Res Arcana is uh, is a bit of a uh, tableau building, engine building game. Turn resources into other resources to let you buy more cards. That lets you turn resources into other resources and keep buying cards. You make it sound so exciting. <laughs> Did you really? You really are making it going. Chris, you're doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly you. how it feels to me. It's like, oh. Oh, you don't like this one? I think it's okay. That is wrong. Sick. Hit him with it. I think it's that's okay. I'm not hitting anyone with it. I think it, it is vastly overrated. That's I am the voice of the people. You think that. Mm -hmm. Give it to him. I think this game is a little bit overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't evolved. loved it. Yeah. I haven't loved it. But no, it's fine. That's interesting. But listen, last year, first year on the list, it was at 74. Now it's up to 43. This really clicks with, it I does. think, most people. I, I think, think Mike it's and I are, easy to teach. It's easy it. to learn. It has a beautiful production. It's not overpriced. It, it, it has a good form factor. It's not a huge box. It has a, lo a lot of things working for it. I just find it kind of sterile. It's just it, To me, it just kind of feels like another resource building card game. Sure, sure. No, that's, I get that. Yeah. I think it does a lot with a little. I think that's what it is I for me too. Both of those are true. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I can they can both be true. I think it's a fine game. I just like some other games I've railed about a little bit. I just don't get quite the the rabid love for it. I'm like, oh yeah. He it's says a fine having put game. tapestry in his <laughs> list here. Tapestry is good. <laughs> so I guess I I agree with Tom that's sort of boiling down to the essentials, you know, absolute sort of bare essentials that yeah. still manage to give me all the combo rific fun of this kind of game. But yeah. I get it. Sterile is not maybe not a bad word for, for how true. this could come across. Yeah. But yeah, but there are one, if not two, expansions for it. So I think mm -hmm. I think people are have still not, yeah, yeah people are still digging into yeah, it, so yeah. it's been moving up. This so, is my favorite Tom Lehman game. Wow. More than a race for the galaxy, huh? <laughs> That's foolishness. Yeah, I, I, I had, your, had your back up till now. I'm a foolish <laughs> man, but this is actually my favorite of his games. Right. Yeah. All right. So number 43. Uh, no. Res Arcana. My number 42 is a game that has uh, been around for quite a while. It is a game that I still see getting played uh, quite a bit. It's Where, a game that Mike? Hmm, let's see, like Where you uh, been? all of the major board gaming uh, hotspots, of which I'm very familiar. Uh, <laughs> I guess no one invites me. <laughs> uh, all right, Bonacore's house. I'm talking about Bonacore's house. No, uh, my number 42, he probably does play this game because it is alcohol-themed. My number 42 is Viticulture. <laughs> 
Man. Um, Viticulture <laughs> is a, uh, worker, a worker placement game uh, themed around producing wine. And so this is a game that I think does a really nice job of evoking that theme. Uh, you know, of course things are abstract, and of, of course they are, but I, I like all the little things, the little wake-up track. I think that's clever. Um, the the way that you're age, you, you age your, your grapes and your wine. Is that thematic completely? No. Do I care? No. It's still easy to understand. Um, I will say this essential edition that you see here is to me the way to go because it has the Grande Worker. It has a couple of the things added in from the original Tuscany. If you take this and you want even more, you can get the essential Tuscany and it adds another whole board, which really ramps it up. But just as it is base viticulture i'm always happy to play it's a very pleasant game to me it feels pleasant that's the word that comes to mind the look of the game is pleasant the feel of the game is pleasant okay. yeah, yeah that's sure. my number 42 viticulture hmm. too low too you think? low yeah huh? uh, did it go down yeah it's down five five uh points for me okay i'm bringing katala back out do it and then this time, he's working together with uh, Ludovic Montblanc, I think. What a surprise. This is Dice Town. Dice Town is an oh, oldie. Oh, yeah. But a goodie. Dice Town. Um, I saw you teaching that this year. Yeah? Yeah. You were teaching at one of the retreats, weren't you? Probably. I don't I, know. I've taught this game a decent amount. This is fun. This is just lively. This is a lively Western game with you rolling poker dice holding people up and claiming, you know, robbing the bank, claiming land, doing all these things and, you know, it's just kind of it has that energy to it I like that the expansions have added some interesting things to it though, to be fair, that very first expansion is one I don't really use, it it, it makes the action of each location it gives it an alternate action, mm -hmm. just like Tokaido did with that yeah, one expansion. Yeah, with, with Crossroads, yeah. So now, when somebody wins a location, they pick one of the two things you can do, and second place gets the other one. Okay. And so it kind of feels like it slows down the game by about 50%. Mm. I don't really... It loses it loses some zippiness to, you know, to, okay. to that expansion. Zippity doo -dah. Some of the other things I do like that they added later on. Anyway, the game is just... I wouldn't say chaotic, but it's uh, it's uproarious. It often can lead to messing with somebody and stealing a thing from under it's somebody. A great game. It's yeah, and, it, and and it, yeah, it definitely has that. A lot of times, games try to put that poker thing into it, and it doesn't integrate well. It integrates yeah. perfectly in this game. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that, that thematically yeah. and otherwise, it's a fun, really yeah, fun game. One of my funniest gaming experiences. There's a guy who was so excited to play this one. I think maybe because of the Bruno Cathala name or something, but he was so excited. He had so heard so much of you guys talk up about it. He learned all the rules. He taught it to us, and he was the person that hated it the most at the table. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, did you you didn't know what this was going into? You learned the rules and you mm -hmm. taught us, and he was completely caught off guard. Wow! I think if you go into it expecting anything less than uproarity, you're gonna have you have the wrong idea of this game. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Things will get stolen from right. you. Yeah, yeah. It's not that it's completely random and brain dead, but think of the Wild West yeah. and the chaotic sort of nature sure. of that, and then you approximate the feeling of the game. And there's yeah. bluffing involved. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty. This is like 16 years old now. This or is something. old. Mm -hmm. This is old, but it holds up, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. All right, my number 42 was 17 last year. It's been on the list for five <laughs> years. Um,. It's been a bit since I played this one, but I still really enjoy Champions of Midgard. Oh, I played this um, for the first time this year. Did you? Did you oh, play? no, last year. Sorry, yeah, we did the Catch a Palooza. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the that's 20, why we did the Catch a Palooza. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. call it the 2020. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. That's reasonable. Yeah. Hopefully, that's Some the last time. I would well. like 2022 mm -hmm. to be its own year, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and then 2022, maybe. Anyhow, this is a game with dice chucking, which seems like it would. I, I think if you don't like dice chucking, you still might enjoy the game because it is at its heart a worker placement game. Mm -hmm. And where you're working hard to mitigate the rolling of the dice, I will say very much if the dice randomness bothers you, the expansion of a hollow really changes the game up sure. to a point where I probably wouldn't play without it at this point because bad die rolls can still be good for you in that case. Right. 
Um, but I just like the choices in this. I think the theme is pretty strong. They came out with Reavers of Midgard, which was okay. I mean, was, I mean, I should say, okay, it's a good game, but it's a very different, it's very Euro-y yeah. style. I like this one better. I just like the excitement of fighting trolls and things like that. I'll say it's interesting. When I, when I played it and learned it for the first time, it was with both the expansions. And after we were done, I was thinking, I'm not sure I would like just the base. I felt like I needed well, I, to have I'll tell you, expansions. And when you look at my list, it was 142, and I played both expansions, and the next year it was 14. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I really feel like this is a game huge that, jump. This one, I think, really needs the expansion. Me, personally. I, I felt like I was like, I yeah, don't know that I would Yeah, this is pretty close to just... essential expansions. Yeah, yeah. Not that, the, not that the base game was unbalanced. No, We have no. to like take a faction add 30 points to it, but <laughs> the expansion helps. It just felt more punishing. It felt it left a bitter taste in your mouth when you built up and built up and fought and were wiped out. You know, yeah. it had that uh, Tidal Blades kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. I think the expansion alleviated Tidal that. Blades could have the same expansion. Tidal Blades Valhalla. Valhalla. I love it. Valhalla Blades. You heard it here first, folks. Okay, that's sounds coming. Like a racing. Okay? Mm -hmm. That sounds like a, a, a rollerblading Valhalla team. Valhalla Blades, yeah. <laughs> All right, People's Choice for number 42 is a very, very popular party game. Uh, the name of the game is Just One. Mm. I love it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever played this with anyone who walked away from it and said, "Meh." You know, it's yeah. it's just always a good time. It was number forty-four last year. It was seventy the year before, uh, and so. How are you going to guess that clue? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. No one's going to no wow. get that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this, Come on. It's the hazelnuts that's really throwing That was it off. definitely set up for you, though, right? <laughs> no, it, you think? You wrote that's... milk and I wrote dark? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so the idea is everyone's writing a clue, and then uh, one person has to be the person to guess a word off of which all those clues are based. But if, if any two people write the same, two or more people two write more the same people, clue, yeah. those clues are eliminated, and then the one person just has to guess based on the leftover clues. It's such a simple conceit. Who it here works. plays this as a game? Like for score, and, and you put the seven. Oh, was nah. it like seven or eleven cards, and you have to go through all of them? I we did that. it. We did it at the at the retreat. Why wouldn't we I do it that? that way? I have never done it. We just take the deck and we play and play. And eventually, someone's like, "I gotta go," and someone immediately sits down in yeah, their spot. You could definitely every play time it I that played way. this. They just you just play one. You you win or lose. Yeah. You can definitely. Do okay. That. Yeah, I don't know, uh, but anyway, what I do know is people really love it. Number forty-two, just one. Just one. My number 41 is a game that is moving up a little bit. It's up three places. It could continue to rise because this is a game that demands that you put in a lot of time to be able to feel comfortable with it. My number 41 is Too Many Bones, uh, a game that has... You love these big games. I, I, That's amazing I, to I, me. This and uh, what's the other one? Cloud Spire. Yeah. Yeah, they both have... Uh, I, like, um, I like them both, and they both kind of take a commitment. They... they they're as close as I'm going to get less to. A, so. Yeah, this one less so, and that's why it's higher on the list. Um, they they both are as close as I get to lifestyle games, meaning that you have to play them often enough to keep the rule set fresh, so that you're not relearning the game every time. You get comfortable with one of the gear locks, which are the names of the characters that all work differently. They have their own keywords. They have their own dice. They have their own strengths and weaknesses. You get comfortable with one, and then you move on to another one. It's almost like okay, well now I need to figure out how this one works. I like that. Not everyone does, and I got to be a bit honest. Gloomhaveny. Yeah, a little bit gloomhaveny in that sense, um, and it's also a tough game for me to introduce to people because oh word, it's yes. really hard to teach, and it's very hard to learn. Um, I play it primarily as a solo game, almost exclusively as a solo game. I've played it as a two-player game before, but the vast majority of my plays are solo, and I think it's a tremendous solo game that rewards the effort you put into it. Uh, that's my number one, 41. Too many bones. Too many my number bones. One, 41 is a much lighter game from esteemed, acclaimed, never outdone, no, that's not true, uh, no, designer. Uh, a couple of bones. Reiner Knizia. Reiner Knizia. Woo! Uh, I did not, again, once I made this list, I... I ranked things against each other, then spit out that ranking and didn't touch it. I'm surprised this is this high, to okay. be honest. Okay. Whale Riders. Wow! I'm really surprised. That is awesome. That high. Chris loved this game. It is one of my least favorite game experiences of last year. Really? <laughs> to did be you fair, play both of them. To uh, yes. be, to be well, fair, uh, was it the game? He got 
wrecked. <laughs> you got wrecked. He huh? got schooled. A school of fish. You got uh, you playing against Mike? Whales aren't fish, Mike. Oh, yes. They're fish. <laughs> Why would you go head to head up against the Canizia master? Wait, so you don't like this? We call I, him the Das Doctor. I did Canizia. not enjoy this. No. Ooh, I, all that, right, my, I, I like my this wanting game. to play this has gone down now. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it's a very beautiful, fun game. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a light game. Yes. I think a lot of people, and again, on this list, you can see from the people's choice, oftentimes as these, these heavy games right. rise to the top. Yeah, like Just One. <laughs> no, Just One is, a, is gets the same pass as code names. Chris, yeah. you're on fire. I want you to stay there. Um, <laughs> stay on fire is what but you're <laughs> This is a light Canizia game. I think maybe that's part of the backlash. People see a new Canizia, and unless it comes in a little box, right. they want Tigers and Euphrates again. <laughs> that's very true. This is not that. No. But I really liked it. This idea of buying something or moving to the next port, trying to fulfill orders, you know, like uh, recipe fulfillment, whatever. The longer these people buy things at a port, bad weather starts to come in. I.e., you pull tokens from a bag, and sometimes they are storm tiles, weather tiles, yeah. And so they clog up the port. Eventually, you want to move, but getting to an earlier one, getting to one earlier rather, lets you have fresh pickings of what's there. Eventually, you make it to the bottom of the coast, and then you come back up. Timing of when to move yes. ahead, when to stay behind, what to grab, what to leave, how much things cost. That's all part of it. And yes, it's a subtle game in that aspect, but I just found it kind of thinky and breezy at the same time. And that's a really happy area for me. I, yeah. I like that that spot. Question. You're saying this is light. Where would you compare this to Rail Riders, the card game? It's the, don't no, even, it's don't, the Rail, Rail, Rail Riders, Riders the card game is trendy. It's a... 25 year old game that they just threw artwork That game on. almost floats away. It has so, nothing yeah, to do with it. Like, Whale Riders is a real game. Pure trash. Yeah, it was an old, old, old game that All they right. just rethemed. They're not related. This is, this is okay. I think, a hallmark of some Kinesia games, not all, <coughs> where it really. It really does reward playing it a few times because you see subtleties. You, like you said, it's subtle. It, it is it, subtle. It, it, it is light. There, make no mistake. But those timing decisions can be really interesting. I mean, there's more yeah. than than just sh showing. Like like the peak of a iceberg. You might think that all you're seeing is right there, but if you, you go deeper... You were doing deeper, so well, so you're you not going deeper. He's going to dive into his metaphor. And never there's a German mathematician down there. <laughs> Frozen in the ice. <laughs> Frozen in the ice. Wearing a tie. <laughs> That's correct. There's more than meets the eye. And if you let ladder. him thaw out, he will reward you He'll with, start with Tigers and Euphrates 2. Electric Boogaloo. The return of the Spiel des Jahres. Yes, I, I would try this game again, but not at four players. Okay. Or that with anyone at this table. Right, because you Maybe. will get wrecked. Probably. Wow! That's the only game I think I've ever beaten Chris at. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, go and say something. My number 41, second year on the list, was 28 last year. I love the application of the app in this game, and that is Forgotten Waters. Oh. Um, but it's not just the app. Uh, here that I like. I really like the storyline of this. There's very few good pirate games. Uh, another pirate game came out last year. What was that other one with an app, too? Sea of Legends. Sea of Legends. And Sea of Legends was just, just a problem. Mm. I mean, maybe the, I heard the app's getting better and they're fixing it, and I'll go back and try it. But the app here had great voiceovers. Um, and it had a good worker placement style game where you're you flip through the book, and the worker placement's different each time. I I like this game a lot. It's really solid, um, yeah, and it and it, and it does that mix right that I like when you do any pirate old west type thing where it's um, historical but a touch of supernatural. Sure, sure. I'm I'm a big fan of that. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be all supernatural, but like. We're going and going and going, and suddenly there's a giant squid from the depths of the deep and a shaman nearby or something. Yeah, you know? there's a term, a, a literary term, I can't think of, something realism that you're right. That's that's kind of cool. Sir. Maybe. No, it's not surrealism. There's another there's a ter another term for it. He's calling remember. you sir. Well, that's And you true. just threw that off. Well. All right, he can, 42, he Forgotten can Waters. Night me, but well, with that, that thing, I'm afraid yeah. I'd have a cranial. Yeah, yeah I'd have 41. to look it up, yeah. Uh, See, so have you played this one yet? No, not yet. I wonder if you'd like this. I, I could go either way. Yeah, I think. if you're in the mood for a storytelling game, yeah, I do like that kind yeah. of stuff lately. Especially, mm -hmm. I've been really enjoying games that 
tell a good story. Yeah, the reading and the whole that whole thing is charming to me. Yeah, yeah. It's well, each one. mission you go on in this has a very different. I don't want to hear any more about it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I said judgment. Rude. Mm -hmm. No, but there's a different <laughs> captain for each one, and they come with their own personality. I really like that. You can. Get to know the captains better, but yeah, I, magical I, realism. Thank you. That's what it is. That's the literary term. Oh, magical what, realism. Is that what it's called? Yeah, like uh, one of my favorite authors, uh, Haruki Murakami. He does a lot of magical realism. I just couldn't think of the term. Well, I like it. I'll yeah. try to use a term for now, but I'll forget. I'll be like, it's real <laughs> magicalism or something. <laughs> yeah, like real too. magicalism. Well, let's go over to number forty-one. Mm. This is not magical realism mm. whatsoever. This Brass. is about. This is about all sorts of spooky monsters. Spooky monsters. Cooperative game where players are working together <gasps> to defeat them. <gasps> People's Choice number 41 is horrifying. Wow, good call. I love it. I crossed over with them. I think this was on my list. Yeah, last year, this is 38. The year before that, 110. So, I mean, it's brand new, obviously, two years ago. It's it's a, it's a family weight cooperative game. I think that the, the theme is, in, uh, is just entrancing. It's very fun that you can kind of mix up and match which baddies you're going to be fighting against. Yeah. Uh, some of it is by the numbers co-op type sure. stuff, right? But uh, you know, using what Tom Basso calls the outdated action points uh, mechanism. <laughs> that was a dig. Pick up and deliver. Again, I'd like yeah, to clarify. I was mm -hmm. talking about the vast amount, like six to ten. This has four. Mm. This is four. Four is okay. What about five? How do you go about five mm. action points? Only if you're a specialist. But then six, that's it. That's your threshold. Six is a threshold, I mm. think. Mm. Interesting. If mm. flawed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I don't know anyone who I don't know anyone who terribly dislikes horrified. You know, people yeah. say either, well, it's 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 generic or people really like it. And I think most people really like it. For the pick up and deliver thing yeah. is what kind of makes it neat. It's I a co-op that's pick up and deliver largely. A lot of folks need to be taken to where yeah. they gotta go. Yeah, I haven't really seen other cooperative games that lean into that part of it that, that, that lean into any of that that much. And and also the way that the monsters work slightly differently, I think it's a great hook. Yes. And and they keep coming up with clever things. And I've even <laughs> seen some homebrewed ones on Board Game Geek that are really neat ideas. So this is a pretty wide decision uh, or design space. I think they can play yeah. with. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to make the call, though, that the new one... You said the new one's about the same. Good, better, yeah. whatever, the American... What's it called? American, American Monster. American Monster, the cryptids, yeah. I think that's never going to reach the heights of this no, one. No, it won't. This has more, like, charm, I think, that the universal monsters, you know. I think this will I be, the this one will be forgotten in a few years. I'm talking, like, not by people who own it, obviously. I'm just talking about availability. I think this is going to go away mm -hmm. in a couple of years, and the other one is going to be the one you can get, and then expansions. That one's expandable. Because the expansion this one's not. That's true. That is yeah, true. That's sure. true. I think they that was like a soft reboot. Okay. And I because it was a big hit, this was you know very popular. It's very popular. I think they reboot it and they can put out expansions and they'll let this fade. Yeah. So eventually, I do think so. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. They're both good. All right. Before we close today, a couple things. First of all, we want to do a shout out to Sebastian Mawasi. Ah! Ooh. Matt Linfanti, ah. Florian Fab, ah. Wait, what from we do the there? Peacock Tabletops creator of Materia Prime. Keep going. Materia Prime. No, no, he's supposed to, we're supposed to clap between everyone. Kenneth. Ah. Catherine Tia Eliason. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry, that one's supposed to be Mr. Joe the Great. Ah. And Jeff from Tabletop Toolbox. Ah. Hey, I know Jeff. <laughs> Anyhow. I love it. Thank you all. You're beautiful. Thank you, guys. If you like watching this, we ask you to consider checking out our Kickstarter, DiceTowerKickstarter.com. Or at the very least, thumb up this video. Or come back in 27 minutes to see Destinies played live here Ooh. on the Dice Tower. Um, so we better get going so they can set that up. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm Z Garcia. It's time to dance. Break pens, ah. everybody. Break those pens. Ah.